but uh welcome back you guys to another episode of we were gamers episode 302 Ooh. Three joining oh. me today are... i'm gonna miss 303 uh you know how i like those palindromic numbers yeah Did you guys you ever be... listen to that band palindrome Which... no 303 what is 343 uh i no i know they're a, a band yeah i feel like they had a bunch of popular songs in like the early 2000s and then never again they made like two songs you've ever heard of let's see uh star struck with two k's featuring Katy perry yeah that's one of them don't trust me i don't i don't know any of this you've heard that star struck song okay well, their logo is three zero H exclamation point three. Ah, <laughs> I guess I should. I guess I should say oh. Their website is three o h three dot com. Yeah, so no one's ever gonna find them. I don't know why I gave them a free website shout out. Yeah, I don't know why you would have done that. I don't know. Maybe I'll edit it. The out check later. better be in the mail. Three o h exclamation point three. For all your spike in traffic. Yeah. There's still a going concern, apparently. Colbert bump. Okay. Yeah, we have that kind of pull. <laughs> Definitely hey, a thing. That Ukraine bundle made six million, and I'm taking half of it for our credit. <laughs> <laughs> I said it Modest one time half. on this we, we mentioned it twice on a podcast. Yeah, I'm sure the analytics on that track, so it makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll break it down later. Uh, but flipping things over from breaking it down, JJ, uh, I see you built something up this weekend. Oh, my what? God. Oh, hello. Good at transitions. <laughs> this is just unprecedented for this podcast. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I've been working on this for more than a weekend. But sure. yeah, <laughs> the, the completed photos were shown uh, this past weekend. Uh, my wife's birthday was coming up, and she wanted a present and I suck at gifts and finding like good ones and ideas are really hard for me. So I thought, you know, she'd been looking at like a potting bench or something like that. Cause she does, she's been planting a lot of plants and has like a really nice garden. And so I wanted to try and make one. It's like, this felt like it was within my capabilities. I own a drill. I own like, you know, saws and things of that nature. Uh, I didn't own a miter saw, which turned out to be relevant. Oh, yeah. Uh, ooh, miter saws are... Toy? Yeah. Uh, so, but I didn't uh, end up purchasing one because it turns out that our local lumber yard will just, like, cut all the wood you buy into whatever kinds of lengths and stuff you want. If you go to a nice lumber yard, like a, a, a ganal, if you live in Orange County, uh, or similar space where you go and you look at actual wood... Mm. they have dudes that just sit there mitering all day <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much uh and this was a dixie line of uh, the one near us uh and yeah there's a very nice dude and you know we purchased the t like they're like well what kind of lumber are you looking for are you looking for pine you're looking for common you're looking for da, 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 da. redwoods a million dollars what do you want what do you want and it's like <laughs> i don't just like normal wood <laughs> please it's just like a bench like okay we got you like we understand what you want here um and uh i found some plans online that were like very detailed which really really helped um you know it was like buy this many pieces of this cut them into these sorts of things and here you go right so it, like i was we were pretty organized by the time we got to the lumber yard um but then yeah the, the people there were super nice uh, helped us pick out the types of wood we needed and then it was just a matter of like standing next to the dude at a like very high powered miter saw and helping him okay i need x number of pieces this long and x pieces like this and you know just going down the list checking off to make sure we had everything jj uh, and let him do it yeah i i gotta i gotta know mm -hmm. how come you didn't use this opportunity to say you know we could use a miter saw so the thing is is that um by this point, I had already spoken with my father who owns one, and I could have used it, or he could have just given it to me because he doesn't want it. <laughs> okay. But so I you... didn't want to make that drive, and ah. they charge you like 
two dollars for 15 cuts or something stupid sure. like that right okay but see so whenever sometimes... whenever you want to yeah if i if i in the future need to do this again which i may um i will probably uh raid my father's garage and take that miter saw many times when doing house repair and or new projects uh i'll i'll see like hmm, michael uh needed some connect fours made <laughs> yeah and the the proper way to do a certain joint was to get something called a craig jig i was just about to say um we didn't get one of those either oh see so every time one of these comes up my solution is well what's the proper way i guess i need to buy that tool so the plans for this called for a bunch of like two and a half inch deck screws and two by fours. So this is like a really basic project It's not sure. doing anything crazy here. And so it's just like, you know, it, look, if I'd had to do this without a power drill, I don't think it would have happened. We would have bought one of those. Right. Right. <laughs> so certainly that was uh, part of the equation knowing that i already had the drill right and of course you don't actually need a craig jig to put anything together ever no it's just of, of one of those not, right one of those like well if i have the opportunity to get a tool and they're like you know make sure you uh countersink all of your screws and then fill them over with wood putty so that you have the nice beautiful finish which i also didn't do that's going too far it would look very nice but yes i agree it is going too far it's a lot of work yeah so um, but yeah, it, it turned out really well. Uh, and actually it became relevant at the end that I didn't have the miter saw because there was one cut that I forgot. There was oh, supposed no. to be two little, uh, p they're, they're there in the finished product. Uh, the little pieces on the edge of the upper shelf. Uh, I had the board, but it didn't get cut into the correct sizes. And so I had to hand saw two small, like six and a half inch pieces. No, board. that's not bad. It wasn't bad. It was only two, like two sawings. Uh, and I had the table mostly completed by this point. <laughs> and so I could use it as a place to like <laughs> hold the, the wood while I was sawing it. So yeah, it wasn't a little so sawhorse. Bad. Yeah, basically. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, but it was, you know, pretty good time. Like I said, it took me about two weekends. Uh, not all of that time, uh, obviously. Uh, but yeah, you know, good, good little project. Fun to get out there and cut some stuff up. You feel accomplished. When you go out there and like do stuff with your hands, you know? Yeah. I definitely think and it's nice to have had something that you now you get to look at all the time, and be like, I built that. Yep. And at the same time, my wife was building her own uh, woodworking project. So we were out there working together and she made a nice little shelf to store her plants that she pots on. And so it's nice. They're both hanging out out there doing just fine as far as we know. We got some rain recently. They seem to not have fallen over. I consider it a total win. <laughs> There you go. Well, very nice. Uh, I guess while we're on the uh, the subject of wood carving, you guys want to talk about some uh, inscription news? Oh, there is a. Uh, I think we we have definitely mentioned it before, but on Thursday of last week, Casey's mod officially came out. So I, I think of. Uh, have you played this yet, Andy? Because I know JJ has. I have not yet played it. JJ talked about it on the podcast, and I see that there are new achievements. Yeah, oh. so that is the thing I know about this. It just came out like pretty recently. I have not had a chance to check it since it came out. But uh, I did play it a bit, and we talked about it here. Yeah, did they uh, have I'm very excited challenge to dig levels when you played it? Couldn't, couldn't tell you. Don't know. <laughs> oh, okay, because this that's new. There's, there are seven, I think, new hidden achievements and one, two, three, four, challenge level achievements that I see here. I am installing right now just to. Uh... Yeah, I I had it installed already, so it probably is updating or updated. Um, I'm absolutely he, going to check it out. He said the words Casey's mod has launched and I just launched Steam and installed it without even looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to uh, be out this soon. But so again, I don't know. I haven't looked at the like patch updates or whatever. I had sort of been following some of the the update notes. Um 
but my understanding was he said the developer said at the beginning of the project that like there was intended to be some amount of story content in this seven and, hidden achievements would suggest ooh, so and not you know i mean the all the stories you know the story is related to the story of inscription especially based on that name um i don't know that it's like a post thing i'm not sure like you know, given how that story ends um well, guess we'll have to find out and play it, right? Yeah, it's got to be background stuff, but we'll see. That's cool. I never. I'm, I'm interested in background stuff too. So, right? Yeah. All to the good. Been a that's a that's an exciting day here in the JJ side. All right, we'll, we'll report back on that one. Um, speaking of things we're fans of, Andy, do you want to talk some fans? Dear Lord, he's great. I hear you have. <laughs> I hear you have a follow up. <laughs> I do. Uh, we got an email, a, a, a rightful email that <laughs> sometimes when you're talking over the internet, um, three people can have different ideas about what you're actually, what we're all talking about. And I think when we were talking about CFM and static pressure, we all kind of got garbled up with which ones we were talking about when, uh, so to clarify this person, uh, did not want their name out. So. To clarify the email from said person, the static pressure and CFM are not the same. Uh, to kind of give you the idea of what one, which one matters for what. If you're buying a case fan that you're putting to blow air in or out of your case, the number you want to know is CFM, cubic feet per minute. How, what volume of air can it move through the fan in that amount of time? static pressure is this is the not a great way to explain it but is the best way to explain it unless somebody thinks differently which i will leave open after i say if there's something obstructing it can it continue to push the air that it says it can and how well so a fan that you're going to put on a radiator you would want high static pressure and cfm would not matter as much so that's that's kind of what you're talking about, right? Um, I, I guess when we said the the speed of the air, is that not correct? I mean, it, it was it, described as a velocity, but I guess that's not the, the totality of it. It's not entirely the totality of it because you have to push. It's like, what what is it pushing, right? The speed of is what that, air is why it's called static, static pressure. Michael may know the answer to this. Michael, do you know what static pressure is measured in? Uh, yes, uh, I know. I, okay. If, if, I, I am millimeter, just millimeters of H2O. Okay, so it is it is just a pressure. It is yeah. literally just a pressure. Okay, right. interesting. Yeah. And so, so it's not correct entirely to say velocity, right? Right, so it's like it's like the weight of the air. The weight of the air. And, and how that gets translated is how hard can it push it is the right way. So it's not velocity really, but like when sure, you're talking yeah. to in layman's terms, it's, it's more like how hard can it push it? Because if you're putting a high static pressure thing up against a radiator that creating that pressure bubble outside the fan pushes something through the radiator better than a high CFM can. So that's the difference there. And that is just to, it's oversimplification and also over clarification. Cause last time, I think we got garbled when we were talking about size and RPM and DBAs and CFMs. And now we're talking about millimeters H2O and how many pins. And it's just like, oh my God, you know? <laughs> I know. I, like, I, I am happy to enhance my own understandings of these topics. So I don't think I'm we were all very off. I think what we were just, we were talking about two different things at the same time. And uh, you just kind of get lost in that in the internet. But basically, if you're thinking about cooling, uh, think about like cooling your room with like a large air conditioning unit or a box fan from far away versus holding a fan directly in front of your face. Like that's my mm -hmm. take on what the difference between CFM and static pressure are. I don't know. I get it. No, that's, yeah. a, no, that's a good way to explain it, I think. Yeah. So like, um, you know, when I said I changed those fans on my radiator, the the NZXT fans that came with the radiator are basically just case fans. And so they push 1.3 millimeters H2O, right? Uh, but Noctua makes 
a static pressure version of their same case fan and it's static pressure instead of 1.3 is actually 2.6 so it, it has twice as much static pressure and that's built for a radiator so there's those little stats out there i'm done that's it that's enough you can email and i'll just i'll just keep bringing it up it's good for the people to learn andrew they even if we ourselves are learning we should help them learn too it makes sense if they uh, if they want to email us where should they send that podcast at we were gamers.com just put in the header fan headers no oh, it's it's too meta we do have a website it is we were gamers.com you can go there also you know yeah. we're on youtube on and there, instagram and all those kinds of places let's see on there and on youtube you can find component class stuff too if you're interested in this we've got a and- nice library of videos put together i think jj is right that oftentimes just by talking about stuff we actually learn more about it which is kind of cool you know it's not like you're going to the trusted source we're just trying to learn that we're all teaching each other in a way right uh i will tell you that when i was in college i passed several classes that i had a lot of trouble with by attempting to tutor my classmates (laughs) (laughs) i had good grades but not like that good but better than them and we were friends and they wanted help, so I helped them study. And by teaching them how to do the problems, I learned how to do the problems much better and then probably made them more angry because the classes got harder for them too. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> isn't, that the, uh, isn't that the med school mantra? See one, do one, teach one? I don't know, but that sounds good. I love the sound of that. <laughs> I'm writing it down. <laughs> Um, on the topic of teaching one, JJ, what have you, uh, what have you learned this week about Elden Ring? I learned several things. Um, there was a patch that came out, uh, you learned and that? they, I did, uh, <laughs> and I learned that their patch nerfed a bunch of the weapons I'd been using. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird to me that it's a single player game, right? So there are PVP elements. You oh, can, so that's uh, why they had to nerf it? You can invite well, people. I don't know how this stuff works. So the, I know how the multiplayer works. You can invite people to be either, if you invite them, you can invite people that will be uh, invaders, like uh, opposing you, or you can invite people to help you, right? Once you have more than one person helping you in your game, one person or more, then it will allow invaders to come unbidden to attack you both. Oh. So if you're playing by yourself, in Elden Ring, you have no worry about being invaded and attacked unless you actively click on one of their signs on the ground and say, like, yes, bring this person in. However, if you have a friend with you, uh, then there's a chance that an invader could spawn uh, and, you know, but it's 2v1 at that point, right? Uh, so there were some apparently uh, really, really broken and overpowered things you could do. They nerfed all those things. Uh, some of those things involved weapons I had been using, and therefore I got hit with the nerf bat as well. Some of them I think they just did out of spite because the weapons were too good or were like more powerful than they wanted them to be, right? That's um, bad. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I generally think these games are hard enough. Let there be like broken, overpowered stuff and let people use them if they want. Like kind of no one is hurt when you obliterate a boss in 10 seconds using your Kamehameha or sword that shoots lightning or ice or whatever um you know if you think oh you're cheapening the experience or whatever it's like no i'm not (laughs) play how you want to play yeah exactly you don't want to do this don't do it uh if i want to do it i will um so you know that was unfortunate also the one of the summons that you can use in that game morphs into a copy of your character so like uses the same armor and equipment and spells and stuff uh, and apparently this summon was just like stupid good. You had like great mirror yeah. or something, right? Yeah, but also like apparently had like way more health than you. Uh, and then just was like, it's like your same character, but better because the computer has infinite mana and tons more health and just kind of can go nuts. Uh, versus, you know, you are limited by <laughs> those things more severely. Um, they changed that guy, but apparently... Uh, they they just made him less aggressive overall, but he still has tons of health, which is really kind of the thing that matters. So I'm like kind of over here shrugging my shoulders, being like, I don't, no problem for me. <laughs> just sort of wanted him to get over there and take some hits for me. Still good at doing that. So 
Uh, I'm still using that guy a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I've continued to explore places in that game. I'm like, I don't want to talk specifically about the bosses and stuff because I know people enjoy seeing that stuff and and you know exploring for themselves. I have uh, gotten annoyed several times when I've just gotten completely lost and had like no idea where to go anymore. Um, like my map eventually has like filled out to the point where I'm like, okay, I don't, I feel like I've done everything here. I know I'm not really sure where to go. Can you tell where you've been in the game or is it just sort of a, a map where you can't really mark anything off? Uh, so you can put markers and stuff down to like, you know, say, oh, I like there's something here and I didn't, couldn't figure it out or you know, there are like little, there's a whole set of like little coins and stuff you can put on the map yourself. Um, but I wouldn't say it's like super convenient to do that. But if, if you were into doing that in like Breath of the Wild or something, and like putting markers all over it, it lets you do that. So it's like a pretty decent extent. I think you can have up to like a hundred of them on the map. Okay. Breath of the Wild allows some large number. So there is a way to do that stuff. And the map does mark like major locations and dungeons and things like that for you automatically. But it doesn't like tell you when you're done or when you have found everything or anything like that. Right. Or even really when you've killed the boss. So, you know, you may not have a an idea, you know, in that it's like, oh, I found this ruin and I explored it. But then the boss murdered me 500 times and then I left. But it doesn't tell you that you have to remember that yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but it shows you all of your um your grace points right that you can warp to so you can kind of keep track by that sure um the issue being that it's sometimes like not clear all if you found all the grace points at a place right or like if there's more hidden somewhere sure if, sure if you have a big blank area of the map there's a decent chance you're missing something right like that that should be kind of clear yeah um and like i sort of talked to last week about there being you know the map is kind of pictographic in that you can tell where caves and hills and and structures might be if you're looking at the map carefully but it's not you know 100 percent representative of everything in the game so there's not a guarantee you'll find everything just by looking at the map but yeah like i said i'm still having a wonderful time man i'm running around all kinds of new places killing bosses i feel like i'm just you know I, i've gotten to a pretty good point with my little sorcery build um shooting lasers and throwing ice spears and all kinds of stuff and just having a grand old time man that sounds great i mean that's that's all what matters right is that the game is still enjoyable to, no matter how much time you dump into it yep i think the last time i looked i was at almost 80 hours and i'm still not done you are fully in the open world now my man i uh yeah god i think the most daunting thing to think about is that like Oh God, there's like, I know there are multiple endings to this game. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I don't know that I'll be doing all this again that quick. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where like, you know, I, I it's very difficult to 100% a game like this, right? It's like, oh, collect all the talismans and all the sorceries and all the, the faith spells and all this stuff. And it's like, that eh, just seems like a lot of work. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to try and do all that. Maybe I'll try and do all the bosses, but even then it's pretty hard to find like all the bosses. So, you know, maybe all the like main bosses I'll try and do. We'll see. I guess we'll just see how far I get when I get to the end. Sure. Is it the kind of thing where you could sort of save scum the endings or do you have to start fresh each time and, and sort I mean, of take a different track? I mean, Michael, we are on a PC, so you can kind of do anything if you put your mind to it, right? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> that the sounds like some text edit to me. The game auto saves anytime you do anything, right? Oh, okay. so you can't. But if you copy your save, mm -hmm. yeah, you know there might be ways to see all the endings like that. That I certainly see. has crossed my mind. <laughs> but then, like you know, it, but what if some of the endings are mutually exclusive from each other or something? Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, can't be going down both paths at the same time or something like this, right? I don't know about all that stuff yet. Um, TBD. Except. Andy, yo, I'm here. I don't have a trans. I don't have a transition for this one, but I want to hear about some checkpointing. <laughs> it finally happened. <laughs> they now can't. You know. They can't all be home runs. Now you know. <laughs> Sometimes you got to lay down a bunt. <laughs> Uh, 
I decided that since I own all these modern warfare, black ops, etc. games, that I should probably play these campaigns just to see what they're about. And something okay. I had kind kind of forgotten about the style of the uh, Call of Duty franchise was the checkpoint slash saving. I, I guess that's saving, right? Checkpointing is saving features mm-hmm. of the game. And I, I don't know if we haven't really been playing games like this in a long time where, uh, at least on this podcast, we haven't been talking about it because it's been, you know, Souls likes or card based games or Celeste. Yeah, so I mean, like, I, I guess it's worth pointing out a feature of these games or this game anyway, that's different from some of the other ones is they have ways that you can respawn in this game without having found like a, a grace or a, a bonfire. Oh, really? Which is new to these games, yeah. Right. And thus far, I mean, I can't say 100% of the time, but almost every time, there has been one of those in the area where every boss has been. And then you'll respawn, like, you know, 100 feet from the door. So That's cool. that, that is, a, that is effectively a checkpoint. That is a checkpoint. That is literally a checkpoint. And that would be, that would be a better version of what I, I've been encountering with 2019's Modern Warfare. So the... This is relatively now where the Call of Duty franchise lives in its systems, right? And and the way that they want it to work. I don't remember if you played like Medal of Honor or Call of Duty before where almost to a fault they were kind of like rails shooters where you just kind of hallways forever. Um, and you kind of play through the story and, and the checkpoint is, okay, once you clear this room and this or this hallway or this square room that doesn't feel like a hallway uh you make your checkpoint right uh Mm. it used to be that you'd hit kill a certain amount of enemies or whatever the spawns were and that would be it and the game would consider that checkpointed um i think i would say that i don't did any either of you play i know they were xbox so probably the answer is no but did either of you play the gears games no i didn't I've played them with other people in the past, but never like fully by myself. Those introduce the idea of the wave shooter in a way. They're not first person, so you can't call it a first person shooter really. But um, you, I don't know if you remember, but in checkpointing those games, it was all about you. Each thing was more like an arena, like combat arenas. And you didn't checkpoint until you finished whatever the arena had to offer. And usually that was waves coming from different directions. Um, less so about the tactical advancing, uh, you know, through a, through a room, etc. cetera. Um, That's not too dissimilar to what the old Halo games were like, right? You'd get to a place, stuff would spawn for a while until it was done. And then you oh, sort of move on from the place. Run through some Halo. hallways to the next place. Yeah, definitely Halo as well. Um, Halo, I would say was the beginning of that idea. Um, I, I liken it as between the two, right? The old call of duty slash medal of honor. I ideas of we have placed this many enemies out there and the gears way of, of the enemies aren't placed. They're going to come in waves from different areas and there could be a variable amount, um, Halo kind of you knew exactly where everything was always going to show up and which enemies were where and there was less randomness to it than I think Gears has to offer on the harder difficulties like you could memorize a Halo level no matter what but I you know there were definitely moments I think when we were playing through Halo JJ where where you would be playing and like, well, there's an enemy alive somewhere because we haven't checkpointed yet. Yeah, it's like, okay, where is the one little grunt or like mm-hmm. elite or whatever that's hiding somewhere or stuck in a corner or something that's preventing us from checkpointing? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of useful in that sense, though, because it tells you that you've missed something. Sure. Whether or not it's something you care about, right? But uh, yeah. So um, Modern Warfare 2019 kind of is trying to break molds and I see why people like the new 
way that they've tried to do it. I, I actually am quite frustrated by it. Um, because I find it a little bit illusory, illusory, illusionary, Ill, illusory. That's the right word. I don't know. No, I think uh, that's right. Man, there was a whole article I read about this, about the term illusionary versus the term illusory. Okay. Uh, it turns out that the term illusory is strongly tied to the like use of that term in D and D, and then even more strongly tied to when Dark Souls got really popular and started using that term. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. It was uh, like a niche a niche word that was really only used in like D and D circles until it got really popular from the first Dark Souls game, and then has only gotten more popular since. I would say if I were judging words without having known that illusionary doesn't sound like a real word. It does that, not. That is in theory, the word that is more, I don't know. Anyway, I, illusory is the better sounding and word yeah. that is now overtaken the other one. Based on dictionary definitions of the, uh, Merriam Webster variety, illusionary produces illusions while illusory is based on an illusion. So illusory is the term that I want. Uh, because what you're seeing is somewhat illusion based. They they seem like big rooms. And I had a level that I just frustrated me to no end where uh, we're supposed to, you know, as a group advance on this machine gun nest or whatever. And I have to throw smoke and move up and throw smoke and move up and throw smoke and move up. Okay. Well, um, any practiced eye at Warzone would see that there's a whole half of the map to the right that that machine gun could not see. So I wouldn't have to do the level that way. I could just go to the right. Okay. And run around the backside and I would be at the thing. And by this point in the game, you've already learned that checkpointing starting with the original modern warfare has changed over to my feet trip over an invisible line. And then I have checkpointed. It's no mm -hmm. longer okay. about, yeah, it's no longer about eliminating enemies because the enemies spawn almost endlessly unless you're in a room that has them spawn in specific waves. And you can't tell which until you're in the room and having done it. So in this room, the enemies will spawn endlessly until you've made it underneath the machine gun nest. In the next room, they, they're pre-placed. In the room after that, you have to advance on a building and the first wave comes out and you, then you eliminate them and then you're supposed to move up. And once it finds an imaginary position for you to have moved up to, it will change the wave type and it'll change it again and once you move up and then eventually you will checkpoint as you kill the last wave. That's kind of sure. their MO uh, in rotation. Uh, they just sort of take those three ideas and rotate which one you're doing. So in this level, I have seen now to the right, the enemies are spawning to the right. But if I go to the right, the machine gun can't see me. And I, having practiced at Warzone, am good enough to run and gun through those people and go to the right anyway without having much of a problem. Illusory. Yeah. If you go to the right, eventually you will hit an invisible tripwire and be killed. They want you to follow the corridor they crafted for you, Andrew, but they don't want to make it look like a corridor. They're just going to booby trap the alternatives. Yep. And you Maybe you can eventually in some places find tripwires and disarm them. But at this one, I've I went through it four times and I could, never could find the tripwire. Not one time. Very interesting. I don't know if it was actual tripwire, if there's some sort of magic grenade get, that gets thrown at you. I I was kind of I was weirdly taken aback in the world of like games now and this is 2019 so obviously they started making it in 2016 or whatever it takes to make a game now but in in 2022 we're talking about you know play the game your way type stuff and you can kind of beat a boss in elden ring any way you want to as long as you've leveled up enough right um to go back to 2019's release and then be like, um, I just make, sh I got to make sure my feet touch the line to checkpoint this thing. And I have to do it there. I have to find their solution in sort of a weird puzzly way while being ducking behind cover without an actual cover system. 
is uh I think I know why people liked 2019's Modern Warfare, but I'm not sure that I do. That's my review of checkpointing. I think uh I think you're both right and wrong here in applying your critique to checkpointing. It, it, that's not these games, man. That's just not the kind of thing that they're trying to make in those campaigns. I agree. Like they, they, they don't want you to play it your way there. They want you to play it their way. <laughs> and, you know, and that's not wrong necessarily, right? You know, the people that bought those games for those campaigns, which you did not, I assume, right? Uh, were... I mean, I wanted to try two of them because they got really good reviews. And I used to quite like the Medal of Honor series. And I don't know that I dislike this, but like having been trained to use these same mechanics in a different game where the best way to win is to go as fast as possible these literally have almost rote and memorizable places and times when you need to be behind cover because that gun will point at you and kill you if you are not doesn't matter which direction you move doesn't matter if you're sliding doesn't matter if you're you know yeah hmm no, you need to behind be behind the bulletproof class when the truck smashes through the wall because invisible people will be shooting through the hole that you can't shoot through and kill you. Yeah, it is. But it is just it, not that kind of game. Yeah. You know? If you wait for the truck to smash through the wall, then you wait behind the glass for the guy with the machine gun to step through the hole. Then you kill the guy. Then you walk to the right and you'll hit a checkpoint and then you never have to do that again. It's, um, so it's just it's a variation on on pattern recognition in say Metroidvanias, right? It kind you of learn, is. Yeah. You've got to learn the pattern yeah. to be able to progress. Yeah, and I don't. I think the story is actually decent. Um, they're doing a good job making me invested in caring about like this guy that's trying to solve a mystery of a you know whatever. They, they, the story is not terrible. Um, it's it's passable for good. Uh, it's just a weird throwbacky type game. It is reasonable to describe those games as conservative in a lot of different ways, including their design, right? Like the design of those games changes evolutionarily, I guess, as opposed <laughs> to like them radically overhauling it between games. Good point. And so you get, you know, slow movement in the genre until they decide to, you know, blow the whole thing up and do something totally crazy different yeah we'll see they just delayed their their next release until 2024 i believe which you know okay. maybe this is the time right yeah i mean i'm yeah if you're a fan of those things you can't be mad about it i mean there's at least another Warzone release coming next year you've got vanguard that just came out i think it's okay to let let the franchise fallow for a year to kind of like you want to avoid the uh the guitar hero slash uh what is the other one of those I like problems that, where I like that you used guitar hero because this is Activision and Activision. Yes, that's why I used guitar hero pumping <laughs> Call of Duties every single year. Yep. And I think, you know, the Call of Duty has been, you know, very, very popular for a very long time. And I think that they're starting to see like maybe not so much anymore. Maybe it's time to till the fields a bit, you know, and get the <laughs> I don't know, farm metaphor here, whatever yeah. those are. Yeah. Michael, how are those Korok seeds, man? You're insane. I have, I have so seen. I can't believe this. Can we talk about, please, Michael, sure. explain. Sure, we can talk about this. So one of the many, many side quests that are available to you in Breath of the Wild is the collection of Korok seeds. And up to a certain point, they have a functional purpose. You can trade in Korok seeds in increasing numbers to a particular character. Is this to the Beetle? In... No, this is not the Beetle guy. Oh, um, Beetle. Did you see? Um, this the... is Hetsu. Okay. I'm sorry. Did you see? No, the... I know where you're going. Go for oh. it. <laughs> Never mind then. Okay. <laughs> no, no, share it. Oh. It's, it's worthwhile. Uh, some guy spent 10 hours moving all the beetle vendors into one place somehow <laughs> just yes to, just to he get a herded screenshot them, herded them together he herded them together using whatever means that he could to move npcs around the map 
team. It just I think I think technically there is only supposed to be one of them. Like they are the same person, but they put four of them in. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, like Tingle. Yeah, so you can trade your Korok seeds to a character named Hetsu, and Hetsu will increase your capacity to carry weapons, shields, or bows. So you start the game only able to carry, you know, X number of each one of those, and as you trade in Korok seeds to him, he increases the number of slots that you have until all the slots in your inventory have been opened. I really wish there was a visual representation of Link carrying like 800 swords in his backpack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I have seen that that comic drawn for other RPGs. I'm sure it exists for Link. Um, but beyond beyond a certain point, like once you've opened up all of your inventory slots, there's nothing else to do with the remainder of the Korok seeds, but there are a lot more of them. Um, I think you only need somewhere in the 400s, maybe, to unlock all of the slots. But there are 900 total seeds. So to be clear, you only need less than half yep. to get all the functional benefit. And you did Which, what now? Uh, I collected them all. All how many? 900. <laughs> oh my god wild it uh so i i broke it up a little bit um and i would intersperse um so first i used a map because the 900 is way too many for me to spend you know 40 years trying to find all of these things on my own and i figured I, i'd i'd still I be always... spending enough time looking for 900 of them even with a map man I know the map is big, but 900 feels like they've got to be like every 10 feet. They're not, though. The map is that big. You really got to play these open world games to understand just how much space there is sometimes. Yeah. That's why they'd give you a horse, you know? Yeah, it is why they give you a horse. Although I'm I'm jealous of your summon it anywhere Elden Ring horse, JJ. You get invincibility frames when you summon the horse, man. Oh, even better. You use getting on and off of the horse to dodge attacks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I would I would intersperse collecting Korok seeds with um, with doing shrines. So it it made for it made for a good breakup of routine. So it never felt too monotonous. And I'm I think I'm glad that I did it. Um, played through that part of the game before doing a lot more of the main story only because it let me see a lot more of the crazy map that they've put together and probably parts of the map that I wouldn't have gone to or wouldn't have needed to go to if it weren't for trying to find each of these seeds. Uh, and it also let me, you know, it let me work on things like combat uh, fighting through enemies as I went from place to place and get better practiced at that to then apply those skills to shrines and, and the main dungeons. So yeah, glad I did it. The The last set, I will say this, the, the last set of seeds were all the ones hidden in Hyrule Castle. And those were different than collecting all the other ones and maybe more fun for me because... When you get to Hyrule Castle, there are ancient guardians scattered everywhere, and they're all trying to kill you on sight. They are those fire the giant a giant laser. laser. Beam? Yeah. yeah. Laser beam They're beams. all over the place. Oh um, my gosh. And so it becomes, it turns almost into um, Metal more Gear of Solid. a stealth. No, it turns into more of a stealth game. <laughs> yeah, Metal Gear Solid. Um, yeah, yeah. Not so wrong, Metal, Metal Gear Solid. I was yeah. I was thinking Assassin's Creed or or like Thief. But you're trying to to me... sneak through the castle and only engage in fighting when you absolutely have to. Let me say that I did not in my time with Assassin's Creed and would not in the future when I go back to it play those games stealthily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're you're more of a Leroy Jenkins. The way you win at Assassin's Creed is running on the roof and then eagle diving onto your enemies with your knife out. 
Uh, I want to be fully clear that Michael is awesome for having thought of Thief, which is like a game that hasn't had a release since like the 90s and is like definitely actually a stealth game. Oh, no, they did a, a they, sure. they did a newer Thief. I have did it. Did they? Yeah. Oh, wow. It was uh it was New- kind of unfinished. Gigantic, but it was still a pretty good game. Gigantic air quotes newer 2014. Yeah. Newer. Newish. Is that that was uh, Thief Four or whatever that they kind of just didn't uh, they didn't put a number on it didn't put a number on but also didn't finish it entirely. Yeah, like they told a complete story, but there were definitely parts of the game that were kind of not fleshed out as much as you could tell they wanted them to be. Um, but still worthwhile. I'm sure you could pick it up for a song these days and and play through it if you wanted a, a stealth game. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, yeah. it's moments like these for your sake that I wish sometimes that Nintendo had achievements. Um, I mean, there, there is a prize for collecting all 900 of them. Okay. Good. But it's, uh, it's kind of a POS. Oh no. Actually it's, it is literally a POS. The, the Korok seeds, you can hear the air quotes around seeds. Uh, um they kind of look like little animal droppings but they're bright gold uh-huh and so when you collect all of them you go back to hetsu and you get what looks like a giant dole whip except not quite a dole whip uh-huh and you get to do what with Con- it display it proudly in your house oh i wish you could no it, in the it's game in your, yeah. in your inventory that would oh, be don't... great if it were one of the options for things you could display yeah. in the house, though. Yeah, Link has a house he can decorate. How come you can't decorate it with the thing you spent 10 hours getting? <laughs> oh, 10. I was rounding down for your benefit. <laughs> if only. Oh, man. Oh, man. Making That's yourself worse. look worse here, Michael. <laughs> it was... No, because if he had said, like, actually, you get this Giga Sword and it, like, shoots a laser beam and you just kill everything in the rest of the game forever, I'd been like, okay, no one needs achievements. That's great. I'm glad they did that. But instead, they give you Dole Whip. Can you sell it back to Hetsu for a lot of money? <laughs> <laughs> no, it goes into the, it goes into your key items. <sighs> The very last one I that this was a kind of a cool moment. The very last one I connect I collected was at the very pinnacle of Hyrule Castle. So I collected it and then I'm just able to spin and survey the entire landscape from the highest point in the region. There's a 0.01% chance that when Breath of the Wild 2 comes out in 6 years that it'll read your save file and something will happen. I wouldn't. Uh, I won't hold my breath for that. No, no I said not hold my breath on that. Point oh one percent. Okay, generous of you. Point zero zero five percent. Sure. Okay. Let's go with that. What is what is one in nine hundred? Not a lot. <laughs> While we're talking open world, do we want to take just a couple of minutes for uh, some Witcher news that we all saw today? Yeah. Yes. I like The Witcher. Yeah. So news broke today that The Witcher 4 is officially on the books and in work. Um, It will be a development partnership between CD Projekt Red and everybody's favorite Epic Games. I don't know that they're my favorite. I don't know that they're too many people's actual favorite. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know that I hold anything against the employees of that company, let's say. I think I think what it kind of boils down to is that the issue the biggest issues that I have with them don't necessarily come from the development side as much <laughs> as the strategic vision and uh, product rollout groups. Man, I wouldn't even lay anything on them. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I think this will be... Uh, They're going to use Unreal 5, huh? Yeah, that's what, that's what I was going to go next. I don't know about that. Do you think that they can leave Unreal 5 alone and not try to do whatever they... I mean, Unreal 5 is great, but like... 
judging from what they tried to do with cyberpunk do you think that there's any chance that they they don't look at it and go why can't we do this that, and the other thing i mean i don't you know don't, you don't get to make those kinds of decisions when you choose to use someone else's product right like yeah. if you pay them enough money they will build those things for you right yeah that's how that relationship works now and True. to be clear like they made a lot of money all things considered off of cyberpunk probably and the witchers for sure so yeah. You know, I'm sure they got some they got some change rolling around they can kick to get, you know, weird feature X implemented that they need to make whoever's hair look way sweeter or whatever. I wouldn't be surprised if this move comes because of Cyberpunk where they're just like, why don't we just move to Unreal since we you know, we're wasting or using so much money to make our own stuff this way. I mean, I think that's not too far from the statement they literally posted, right? It was yeah, like, you know, sure. we, we, we did an analysis and like, we loved our engine and it was great and all this stuff, but like this other one's over here and for how much it cost to us to do this, <laughs> what if we just use that, you know? Yeah. Use theirs and focus on actually making you the game. Not, you know, not Unreal the worst Engine's, idea uh, given how Cyberpunk turned out. Unreal Engine is powerful enough to run real time, uh, renderings for, video productions so pretty good you know the the end result of everything is if you can always make everything look as good as you want it to and it will run at one frame a second <laughs> right <laughs> it's That's making true. the game go up and down that scale for the people that want it to run really slow but also look amazing and the people that want it to run really fast and not have it look like complete garbage it's a that's the hard part of and then, you know, like making the game, right? That separately from all of that. Yeah, little details like that. I hope that they get to exercise as much control as they like to have over their game. And I assume that would be part of their deal. And so I would not say anything negative. Who knows, though, what the Tim Sweeney demanded. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see when it releases. Yep. 2025, 6? 2028, maybe, <laughs> more likely at this point. <laughs> are they done with cyberpunk stuff? They are, right? They're not putting any more stuff into that game. Don't, I don't know, dude. I don't know. That's they, a good question, yeah. It, they said at one point there was going to be multiplayer for that game. Uh, there's no yeah, way. They, <laughs> they said that. They said it. I don't know if they're still doing it, but they said that at one point, and they've done dlcs for every other game that they've ever put out which I, one, oh yeah two, for three, sure so oh, yeah. yeah and there hasn't been any paid dlc for that game yet that i know of so i i but as as andrew rightfully pointed out this witcher game is like uh four years more or more whatever <laughs> away so you know who knows as of t march 2021 was the last update i can find about online uh which said that they were completely reworking their approach um that's never a good sign and that they were cutting online from future games i guess huh yeah basically saying online will be an add-on for future things but they don't actually talk about what the multiplayer for what cyberpunk 2077 will look like weird uh that's like a non-announcement i don't know what that is i, I no more research setting live. it, setting it down and it. slowly backing away yeah no <laughs> no more live research from me someone who knows something about this email us yeah, yeah. We, we we have 300 episodes of journalism therefore we can keep your identity a secret <laughs> legitimately legally illusionarily anyway wait what <laughs> Huh? <laughs> uh, somebody tell the people where they can find us uh, you can find us on the internet at we were gamers uh, check us out on social media follow this podcast on those platforms like apple and google and stitcher and spotify and all those kinds of places and give us ratings on there we haven't talked about that in a while do that find us on youtube we were gamers all one word subscribe there that helps us out big time i think i'm gonna ride this segue on out of here does it mean you have to like lean forward? How do those work? 
Just don't lean backward on it. That's the only <laughs> thing I know. <laughs> the little John segue. Little John's segue. I don't even know who sings that song. I don't know, but I I don't know why my uh, Twitter today wanted me very deeply to read the story about McDonald's versus Pusha T. Oh, you should have read that story. It was great. Did you? Yeah. The one from Rolling Stone. You should have read it. It was great. Do you know Pusha T invented the I'm loving it jingle? Uh, supposedly it? Right. it doesn't sound like a push a t jingle though <laughs> uh push a t wrote it he said like he confirmed it the like it, it was known that it was written by like some atlanta area person and he came out and said that was me i got a check for it i didn't get royalties i'm still really mad about it and he released a new track that is an ad for arby's <laughs> <laughs> talking crap about mcdonald's <laughs> and the filet fish it's very funny chef's kiss so uh you weren't fall far off there uh michael the original lean back comes from the terror terror squad terror squad featuring okay. fat joe and remy however uh, however the popular v- version uh is from crunk juice A.K.A. Little John, and that track has Little John, Eminem, and Maze. Yeah, that's the one everybody knows. Oh, Maze, yeah. Uh, I got to bounce, guys. Yeah. All right, later, bud. So the Little John segue. Lean, don't lean back. Or do lean back. That's how you go. <laughs> I don't think so. Don't give people bad advice. <laughs> how do you even spell segue? S E G U E. Yeah. Do they not exist anymore? Oh, the 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 you're talking about the actual ride. That's S E G W A Y. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I spelled it three times the correct way for saying that's a nice segue. Uh, but I kept being like, that's not right. And then I would rewrite it and I'm like, that's not right. I'm trying to do the one <laughs> for your feet. And then no, my it's S E G W A Y. My brain wouldn't let me type the wrong one. Uh, I'm. I guess I have to look up Segway crashes in order to see people leaning back. Ninety seconds of Segway crashes. Yes, give me that. <laughs> this is the content we came for. Oh man, that guy leaned too far to the left. That guy ran somebody over. Yeah, that guy leaned back. Oh, what had happened to this guy? He's running next to his Segway, which is now flipping over. Oh, no. This guy's got his golf clubs off to the side of his Segway. Leaning forward. Okay, he's leaning forward. He leaned back. Oh, you go backwards if you lean back. Yeah. Uh, But this guy did it at speed, so it slingshotted him (laughs) over the handlebars. Oops. That lady went too fast and ate it right into somebody else's tire. Okay, so you cannot lean like a bicycle or even a scooter. If you lean, it goes over. Okay, you got to stay stay upright too much. Yeah, and people are worried about baseball. Did you hear they were yeah. re- reversing all the changes from last season? I heard about a couple of them. Yeah, no more runner on second. Thank goodness. That was the one that, that I wanted gone. Double headers are back to normal length games. Okay. And uh, what was the other one they reversed? I don't remember now. Uh, did they implement the the rule against the shift? That wasn't a reversal. That was just the first one that came to mind. They were talking about impl- implementing a rule to to prevent putting all of your basically all your infield on one side of the of second base. Uh, players union agreed in principle in the upcoming agreement to implement a pitch clock, increase the base sizes and ban the shift in 2023. Okay. But not for this season, not for this season. 
Yeah, it makes sense. Um, I think they're also in the new agreement have said that they're going to uh, universal DHs. Yes. Yeah, that was already known. I like the increasing the bag size one. I don't that see one that. I understand. Why? I don't know why they did it. Uh, it's it's well ostensibly to cut down on injuries, right? Like basemen being on the bag and getting their foot or ankle stepped on by a, a base runner who's just a little out of position. Yeah, I think the argument that I saw was that it's too hard to steal bases now because people don't want. Oh, to hurt. interesting. Mm-hmm. But that one makes sense. Less injuries from contact. And uh, huh. maybe we should have talked about baseball rules live. It'll keep. Yeah, whatever. I think we did it. <laughs> <laughs> I just was happy they reversed. Second. The guy on yeah. second was like, I hated that, it. That was so the much. only one that was egregious to me. this text message okay UPS is not sending me a package today because uh, <laughs> because uh, oh okay cool that text came out at midnight Eastern, and it says today. Ah, uh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> All right. So I should go downstairs. Mm -hmm. We talked about maybe going for a walk. Enjoy your walk. Thank you.